Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the P Spawn Node. Now, before I jump in, uh, I've got a, quite a few people asking about paid programs versus uh, what's what's available in the free version of uh, DaVinci Resolve. And honestly, Fusion in the free version it has almost all the same nodes as uh, the paid version as DaVinci Resolve Studio. Close to. There's a few that are missing. And I'm actually probably going to do a video on that. But my point is, is it's it's in a free version. It's a, a free program and it's kind of something that's added to Fusion, the, the particle nodes. And like you always say, you get what you pay for. And even though it's pretty amazing, there are some things that just don't work correctly in Fusion when it comes to particles. And it doesn't quite obey the law of physics exactly how you want it to obey the law of physics, quite like other programs. And this is why other programs cost money. You know, there's plenty of other ones. There's particular by uh, Maxon, uh, Boris FX has its own particle system program. And uh, After Effects has its own particle system program. You got to pay for that. The one I use is Houdini. Um, that's the most common one I use. And there is a free version of Houdini that you can use and play with. It's just limited. But Houdini is kind of industry standard when it comes to particle systems and uh, put them in movies and doing different stuff. And the reason is it obeys the law of physics to the T and does exactly what you tell it. And just to show real quick before we jump into this uh, node breakdown, this is a proof of concept kind of video I was doing for a client for a project we had. And in here, I used particle systems to kind of prove that we could blow sand off of this bike that's not touching the sand, which you might think is easy. But when you have things not touching things to create things in the 3D world, it's, it's more difficult than you think. But in this shot alone, even though I could do almost all this stuff within Fusion, I can't do it with the specific detail and the true physics. And even this flare was a paid for program. It's using Sapphire and Boris FX. And DaVinci Resolve Studio has an amazing flare that you can use in the paid for version. Okay, one in the studio version, but even better in the, the paid for version is still not as good as this one. So sometimes you have to use paid for things to get the results you need and not just the results you need, the results you need and the time you need to spend on it. So because time is money. So in Houdini, pretty much what I tell it to do in Houdini's node base, just like Fusion, what I tell it to do, it's going to happen no matter what. It's just how you tell it and what you're telling it to do. So all this stuff is particle systems, all this dust kicking out. So in order to get this dust to kick out this way, all I had to do was create a sphere that is not being rendered. So there's a sphere attached to this bike that is spinning at the speed the bike is moving, like the real life speed that the bike is moving, because you can do speed in miles per hour or kilometers per hour when you're working in Houdini. So that sphere has another node, which is a mountain node on it to make it all bumpy. So as a sphere is spinning, it is hitting this collider, which is the ground and creating particles based based off that collision. These particles that are flying up from the real world physics of it spitting them out is being fed into a pyro system. And this pyro system is using those particles to create this dust. And this is based off how you uh, do your material and shade your uh, your pyro system. And here I just shaded it to be like dust. I could have made it fire. I could have made it smoke. I could have made it whatever I wanted. But I used the temperature in the data that is spit out from particles to do that. So these programs create that information, you know, the speed of the particles, the, the vector, the, the temperature, how fast. I mean, Infusion doesn't allow you to do that. So that's the difference between a paid for program and Fusion. So as you can see, all this stuff is interacting and colliding exactly how I tell it to collide. So here, this particle system, which is this smoke rolling out of the engine and onto the bike, this bike is considered a collider. So when I tell it to collide with a bike, that smoke is rolling over like it's really there 
and I have no problems with particles falling through, particles not interacting. Same with this shot coming in. This was simply a geometry put in front of the camera to mimic the camera's glass. So when these particles hit the camera glass, they're bouncing off the camera glass like it really would in the real world if this was a real camera shooting the shot. So the particle systems, even this is a particle system, told to go from her hand and attract to the metal on the uh, geometry. So it just naturally creates particles to interact with each other. So this is the difference between using something like say Houdini or particular or a paid for program and using what's free and available in Fusion. So whether it's the 2D or the 3D node, it doesn't quite react with physics how it really, really, really should. And you have to finesse it and make it happen as opposed to it just happening when you tell it to say, hey, this is a tree. I want the particle to hit the tree, bounce off the tree and react according to real world physics. And Fusion just doesn't do that. So that is the difference. And the reason why I and a lot of people use different programs for specific things. But Fusion, you can create some amazing stuff and I have used it for commercial projects. And it just depends on what you have to do. So the particle spawn known. Uh, the other day when we went over the particle change style node, I mentioned you can have it bounce off of something and change the style of the particle. But I said, you can't have it break up and turn into little particles. Not in that node. The P spawn node is the node you would use to make that happen. So what the P spawn node does, we'll go ahead and grab one. P spawn and I'll input it. And let me jump ahead a little bit. And I probably should have changed the settings first because this is a uh, pretty uh, intense node. And actually, what I need to do is give it some direction. So let's drop a P point force node. So we get some force going. And let's bring that over here. So what the P spawn node does is it's going to use every particle from the emitter node to spawn new particles based off that single particle. So you can see in the P spawn node, we have controls exactly like emitter e an emitter node. So we can change our controls, our sets, our style and our conditions or regions just like we can in the emitter node. So let's jump in. Let's go ahead and create something that our original particles hit and breaks into multiple particles. So let me walk you through that. And I'm not going to hit every every single thing on this P spawn node because it is exactly like the emitter node. When it comes to our number of particles, our style, our regions, everything is exactly the same. So let's go ahead and change our style first and we'll leave it as point. But let's go to our color over life and let's change this color over life. So let's start with, say, this uh, orange that our original particles are at. And let's add another one. And let's uh, kind of change this a brighter orange. Let's add one more. And let's say let's make that red. So we've got a particle over life. Let's drop that down. And let's come into our controls and let's change our number. Let's, uh, let's bump this up to say 200. So we've got a lot of particles going on. And let's back that up. And we're gonna leave our lifespan and our variance all the same. And we're not gonna add any velocity. So let's dump this velocity down to zero. So now we've got this slowly being dragged to our force. We should probably change up our point for it, shouldn't we? 
But what we want to do is we want to change our region for this to happen because right now it's happening everywhere. Well, we don't want that to uh, happen. So we're going to change this to say a bitmap and we're going to make it happen when it's intersecting that specific region. So let's create something for these particles to bounce off of. So we're going to drag a background in. Let's bring in a rectangle and let's create our little collider here. And let's change this color just so we can see what's happening. We'll just make it white and we're going to grab a merge node and merge that in and let's bring down the uh, opacity so you can kind of see what's happening behind it as well. And we're going to use this as our region. So we can take this background and pump it into our particle spawn. So now when our particles hit that, it should be spawning into new particles. And there we go. So in order to make this actually hit and bounce off, we need a particle bounce node. So let's go ahead and add a shift space P bounce. And we're going to input that in. And under our region, we're going to change this to bitmap and we're going to use our same bitmap. So now when we play, we've got our particles bouncing off. And let's do a little look dev now so we can start bringing this in a little bit. And we're going to change our force location. We're going to bring it in so it's right past our little collider here and we're going to change our power down and let's see how that looks not bad and change our power way down so we can up our strength and bring our power down so we can keep all those particles kind of in there so there we go now we've got these particles changing into small smaller particles as they hit but we want to kill these additional particles so our original particle emitter that is coming out with these large particles change into our small particles we want to get rid of those so if you remember right we had a kill node so we can add a p kill and input it right there and for our region we want to uh, change this when it's intersecting with our region and we're going to use a bitmap and we're going to bring in our background and put it into our bitmap. Now the problem is you see it's killing all of our particles. So we can go to particle emitter one, go to our sets, assign a set. We're going to say our main emitter is set one. We're going to go to our P spawn with our new ones, go to our sets and we're going to say this is set two. So when we go to our P kill node and go to our conditions. We can say, affected uh, affect specified sets we can uncheck too but you notice something's happening so this is what I was talking about when it comes to uh, real world physics and all that other stuff the, these are kind of based off of geometry and how to enact with geometry so let, let's get rid of this background and instead of our background let's use a line 
So we can take our line and change our location. And now let's play and see what's happening. And once we have some particles built up, we can move this P kill line in until we're keeping our smaller particles, but killing these larger particles that are bouncing off. Kind of find a happy medium. And uh, fairly close, but uh, now you got to realize a lot of this with these large particles bouncing off still has to do with a our uh, our force, our point force, our particle point force. So again, if we start playing with that, we can change our look up or change how those particles are interacting. And then say we want all these new particles to drop down like they're, uh, I don't know, heavy sparks coming off metal. I, I don't know. We're just making stuff up here now. We can add a P directional force. We can bring that in. And you can see it's affecting everything, but we can go to our conditions and say affect specified sets. And we can uncheck one. So now when we play, we have that directional force only being applied to our new little sparky particles coming down. So that is the P spawn node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.